Luther, that's where's my spell. Here you go. Put it to a play. Just give me two little deuces, babies. Little Joe from Kokomo. Come on. Give him that, Dice. There it is. Train an ace. That's me, kiddies. Shoot two. Well, I'm cutting in for a penny. Hey, how do you get that way? This ain't your joint. Put it back. I'm living here with Molly, ain't I? So what? So I'm cutting in for every toy task. Get it? I don't get it and I don't like it. So hand over. Hey, you can't do that to my pal. Hey, what do you think you are? You went in the DA's office, Knuckles. I told you I don't want to talk to or see anybody. It's Pat O'Day. He's got news about your brother, Danny. Okay, I'll see, Pat. But if this is another one of your tricks to try and get me to talk, you're wasting your time. It isn't. Come on. How are you, Knuckles? He said you wanted to talk to me about Danny. Okay, Joe. Sit down. Start talking. Look, who killed Wells? Lay off, will you, Pat? Even if I didn't bump that copper, I wouldn't squeal. Remember how me and Milo wake up still when you raided Tony's fruit stand? That was a stupid coat of a gang of kids. This is the electric chair. And it's our necks, isn't it? Then it was Milo Way. You always did take his rats. I didn't say that. Milo Way's in California. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I also know you never packed a rod in your life. You're covering somebody, and I've got to find out who. You know, scaring me's not going to do any good. I've been pushed around all my life. Besides, why aren't you satisfied you nabbed me? You got your promotion. And you got your headlines. Yeah, but what good do they do me? I'm in here under another name. And I like headlines. Sure. Any mug who thinks he's tough does. But what about your kid brother? Let him take care of himself. I had to. And look where you landed. How much does he know, Pat? He thinks you're in South America. He's with Molly. She can't keep him off the streets. You have gotta help the kid, Pat. We can take care of him. You're the only one who can help him, Knuckles. How? Danny's smart. He knows you never had the nerve to shoot anybody. But if you burn as a fall guy, he'll turn against the law and take every kid in the neighborhood with him. We can't let that happen, Knuckles. Don't you see? You've got to tell me who did the killing. Cut it out, will you? You're a cop and you're working on me. But I ain't soft. And I ain't talking anymore, see? I ain't talking anymore. All right. It doesn't make any difference whether you talk or not. This thing is bigger than we are. It's bigger than the law. I'm going to crack this wide open and save you from the chair in spite of yourself. For the kids on the street. It looks like we're stymied. The governor says if he won't talk, he doesn't deserve sympathy. Pat, what can we do? I can't get to first base. The G-men haven't a single lead on the counterfeiters yet. Well, what about the people who saw the shooting? I've never seen so many blind witnesses. Not one of them noticed who was with Knuckles in the getaway. Well, we can't keep Danny in the dark forever. Knuckles is in under a fictitious name. If he's electrocuted, it'll be all over the neighborhood. There'll be no keeping Danny from hating the law. Yeah, I know. I've got to find some way to convince him that it's easier and a whole lot more fun to play cops than it is robbers. That's it, Pat. Get them interested in something to keep them off the streets. Maybe you could form a club. <laughs> they think clubs are for softies. Oh, but you could interest them in radio. You know all there is to know about it. I've tried that, too. Oh, some of the kids like it. Little Eric, the cripple, has got a two-way set, but not Danny's crowd. They're too worldly, too grown up for such kid stuff. Don't rush me, please. I'll be here all week. I'll fade him. I'll fade him. You got him last time, didn't you? Give me half, then. Half a cent. Shut, Shut up. Shot. Come on, come on. Hop on. Take any part of it. Come on, shoot. Come on, come on. Break it up. Break it up. Copper's bit. Mile away. Gee. Hey, hey, where you been? When'd you get back? Hello, mile away. Boy, don't he look like ready money. Like that suit, would you? I just put on from the coast. So you thought it was the law, huh? Maybe I better run you in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't get them rags being a copper. Angles. You tell him, kid. Maybe sometime I'll tell you about him. 
Molly home? Yeah. And won't she be glad to see you? Boy, are you shocked. Oh, look at that. But Molly, it takes money to start a club like that. Well, something's got to be done. The execution is less than a month away, and it doesn't look as though you're able to stop it. Hey, Molly! Molly! Hey, Molly! Molly, look who's here. A mile away. Well, well. How nice, Milton. Milton. Ugh. I used to pull your hair for calling me that. I don't like mile away. Well, here's the new name. M. Franklin Harris. I got the Franklin off a hotel in Philly. <coughs> new name? New suit? What's the racket this time? Now, ain't that just like a copper? A guy gets a new suit and right away he's in a racket. Don't you ever get tired of that dumb flat foot hanging around? Oh, he sort of liked the furniture. I'll have to apologize for him. Now, I think you look nice. You don't look so bad yourself, baby. How about you and me stepping out sometime? I am nice. <laughs> You'd better be nice, too. Remember I had to chase you out of this neighborhood once? Oh, yeah, but that's all over now, Pat. From now on, I'm strictly legit. Uh, no kidding. Ever since I read about what happened to Knuckles... Uh, let's sit down. What's you stand here all day? Here, Danny. Go buy yourself a cigar. Gee, thanks. Boy, I sure wish Knuckles was back in South America. Hey! You three had a gang just like Dutch Skinny and me, didn't you? Yeah, we had a gang. All right, come on, come on, get out. Us guys are one of Mileway's angles. Wasn't the smartest guy to bunch. I bet he's got her old as a choke of horse. Whatever that is. That's dry up. He ain't never seen a horse. Shoot a dollar! Shoot a dollar! Oh, if we had plenty of money to a real gym with boxing gloves and basketballs, they might go for it. You're right. The kids won't go for an empty room. But use your head. There are a lot of civic-minded saps uptown who are always donating something or other. They'd be glad to throw in with you. Pat, that's a splendid idea. Yes, it does have possibilities. I know a lot of businessmen uptown who might be interested at that. Sure you do. You can count on me for a pair of mitts. I might even drop around sometime and see if you can still lick me. <laughs> Any time. You know, by the way, you always were full of clever ideas. It's too bad you didn't keep your schemes on the level. Oh, Pat, leave him alone. I think he's wonderful. Hey, you're supposed to say that about me. Yeah. Molly used to go for me in a big way. Remember? Well, let's keep talking about the club. I want to get started on it right away. Rowing machine, James McMasters. Boxing gloves, George Morris. Kitchen utensils, Mrs. Mary Borden. Shower bath, Leon Miller. <laughs> You're doing a fine piece of work, Pat. I know the boys are going to help you all they can. I know. I was brought up in that neighborhood. <laughs> Thanks, Captain. And what about the badges? The commissioner's sorry that he can't give it his official sanction. But he did suggest that you design a badge of your own with the inscription... Junior police. Thanks, Captain. I'll get on it right away. Have you got any leads on those counterfeiters yet? No. They're pretty smart operators, Pat. By the way, they haven't passed a bill in your neighborhood yet. You might keep an eye out for anything that shows up. Don't worry, I will. You don't know how to break it, Alpaca. Who told you? Milo always showed me how to break the lock. That's how we got started. We ain't going to break in any boxcar. You want to be like Malloway, don't you? I don't want to go to reform school like he did. We're going after the big stuff like he's doing now. Yeah? Maybe we'll do it without you. Maybe you ain't got the moxie. Maybe you ain't got the nerve to break in a boxcar. I'm running this gang, and you're going to do anything without me. Get it? Okay. Okay. Here you wait! Come out of there! Well, we can't make no dough sitting around here. I'll say we can't. Here comes old man Wilkes. I warned you about breaking the law. You will answer to the police for this. <laughs> oh, 
Hello, Pat. All right, you kids, now beat it. Oh. Look! What kind of a bird is it? I've been to the zoo. Didn't see none there. Well, maybe somebody invented it. Maybe something new. Ah, uh, you dope. They only invent things you can sell. You couldn't sell that. You couldn't give it away. Good morning. Uh, good morning. 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 <laughs> Let's drag it out. Wait. Uh, maybe it'll come if you call it. Here, Percy. Here, Percy. Here, Percy. Here, Percy. Here, Percy. Now, Dutch? Yeah, now! You dumb ox. Want to join our gang? Make a man of you. I had the same kind of a gang, only I had it beat into me that the hard way paid off better than the easy. Just what their parents should do. Most of them don't have time, or don't know, or don't realize until it's too late, till one of their kids has ended up in the death house, like one of my gang has now. Don't you see, Mr. Wilkes? They have no place else to go but the streets. I see. You merely want them to have some place to spend their idle time. Exactly. It's a deal. Thanks, Mr. Wilkes. See what you can do with the old warehouse here. You mean this one? Yes, sir. Let's tell the kids. Well, listen. The big guy in my gang's got to have a name. Like that skinny and peewee. And your name's the mouse. You mean you want me to be a... Well, I can be in your... The mouse. The mouse. Hey, come to think of it, that's a rather nice name, isn't it? And Pat. Yes, sir? Well, say, there's Father. Come on, let's go tell him. Hey, what's the old man for? What's the matter with the Father? Father! Don't raise your voice so. You know what you are. I want you to meet the gang. I've been initiated. Gang V? Hi, Fancy Pants. Uh, I mean, Pop. And from now on, call me the Mouse, not Algernon. <laughs> 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 All right. What? How long did it take you? Oh, it took about four months to build this portable radio set, and it's a honey. Now listen. Okay, Ruggy Mouse. Call the meeting to order. Uh, hey. yes, uh, I'll pipe down your mugs and fall into the meeting. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wonderful, Pat, but... <laughs> Daddy won't give it a tumble, huh? No, Pat, I, I talked to him. I... Sure you did, honey. Well, I'm going after him. Tell Algie to carry on for me, will you? Good luck. Oh, boy. Did you get a load of that? <laughs> get it, Dutch. This is good enough for us. All right, all right. Catch, bull. <laughs> Hello, Tony. Hello, Pat. Oh, I want to congratulate you. You're sure doing a nice job with the boys. You know, keep them off the streets and everything. Thanks. Oh, but this a bunch of here. They sure is a tough. They're not tough, Tony. You just got to get them thinking right. Yeah, got a ball. Come on, come on. Come 
pretty good little nothing. We, were, we just played ball, that's you all. You thief, you steal from my car. I did not. No, I didn't. Doc Smith's lying. We don't want nothing from his old car. Shut up. Now, I saw it all, Mr. Smith. The kid was going after his ball. He didn't mean to break into your car. Nine. Nine. Thieves. All of them. On this one, he winds up like his no good brother is. Quiet. That's enough of that. So, where are we that you beat up citizens? Nine, it is not so here. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. No harm intended. No harm is it? You strangle me and no harm is it? He chokes me because I say you are going to the electric chair like your brother is. You lie, <laughs> Tell him he's lying, Pat. Tell him Knuckles is a South America like you said he was. Look, Danny, let's go home. Then he ain't in South America. Ben Schmidt is right. Well, why did you tell me? Knuckles didn't do anything to die for. Don't let him finish. You want me to do anything he could. Steady, steady, Danny, steady. They're not going to give him the chair. We won't let him. We're going to get him out. I give you my word. Your word. You've been lying to me right along. You'll get him out. It's guys like you to put him in. You're a copper. I hate copper. Well, I swear. Now, look, Danny. He was my pal. Like Dutch here is your pal. And I know he didn't shoot a copper. We're going to prove he didn't. You and me. And we're going to help get him out. How? I've got a plan. Come on home and I'll tell you. I ought to choke you for this. Yeah. I am a taxpayer, and I am going to the commissioner, and then we see who gets choked. Pat, you know, I get my orders from higher-ups. The commissioner is afraid, but this boys' club of future voters, you might try to run this district. That's crazy. You can't tell that to the commissioner, and a cop can't go around shoving people's faces. I didn't shove him in the face. I merely tried to stop him from telling Danny that Knuckles is in the death house. Now, look, Captain, I can't be broken now. How am I going to clear Knuckles if I'm tied down to a beat? There's nothing I can do about it, Pat. Schmidt wants to press charges again, Danny. So get on your uniform and bring him in. Press charges? I told you the kid was only chasing a tennis ball. Will you come to your senses, man? <sighs> yes, sir. That's better. Now get going. Report back here in uniform. All right. <laughs> Yes, Mahoney. Davis and Banks just brought in a stolen car bearing a California license. Well? There was a counterfeit plate under a floorboard. What? A plate. A counterfeit plate for a $5 bill. Send it in. Yeah? Your brains brought us to New York, but we're just as hot to the cops as we ever were. Get your brains working on that. I have. What do you think I brought this mug along for? The cops here don't know him from Adam. All he can do is talk big. Why, he couldn't even give the stuff away. Besides, he's only cool till they see him with you once. That's just why we're scattering out. You're going uptown. He's moving into a classy place on the west side. So he can spend what little dough we've got left? We're going to have plenty of dough. i got a plan. A knockout. Don't tell me. Let me guess. You're going out and polish off the first copper you see. I told you to lay off of that. Oh, it's you. Why ain't Whisper here with that plate? Well, I must have picked him up. And you'd better beat it. If the cops have a bust in here and find that press, it's curtains for me. They hopped over Martin's garage and got the car. Where were you? Why'd you come here? They didn't spot me a mile away. I'm telling you, I even followed them to the precinct station. This matter has been misrepresented to me. I'm going to resign now. Sit down. I didn't bring you here to resign. Oh, don't be a fool, my way. Let's get out of here and go to Florida. The season ain't open yet. I always took care of you, haven't I? Give me a chance to think. I'll figure a lamb to Florida in style. But the cop has finally got Danny. Guess that makes me leader of this gang. And this is what we're going to do. I get a hold of my way, we tie up with him, then we really go places. Right, Pee-wee? Sure, we'll be riding high and Daddy's in the jug. Ah, let him take care of himself. He ain't my worry. What do you ever do for me? Nothing. He's done plenty for all of us, especially you. Say, how about the time he saved you from that reform school rap? 
You remember? Uh, that was nothing. I could have done it with one hand, with one hand. Why, well, it's a rough school rap. You guys turn it soft or something? What's the matter with you guys anyway? Listen, Dutch. Danny's always been on the square with us. And if you were where he is, you know, he'd try to get you out. Well, what do you think we can do? Well, you always said that you were just as smart as Danny was. Yeah, go ahead and think up something. Yeah, why don't you use your old bean? If you got one. I got it. Listen, guys. No, no, I said no. Please, Mr. Schmidt. We won't even come around no more. We join the club and everything. Well, really, sir, you misunderstand, Danny. All of you, or you'll go to jail immediately. Hey, Malloway! Hey, Malloway! Hey, Malloway! What's up, Dutch? They've thrown Danny in jail. Who has? Old Mayor Schmidt said Danny was stealing out of his car. And Pat came and got him. Why that no good copper? Listen, kid, I'll fix it for you if you'll uh, do a little favor for me. Sure. If you can spring Danny, I'll do anything. You know that, mile away. Yeah, but this is not easy. You can get caught. Uh, you think I'm going to get caught? Nah, you're a smart kid. You remember Slats, Kinney? That's totally sure. We ain't around no more. That's what the law thinks. He just pulled a job down the street and planted some evidence to make it look like I did it. The double crosser. Yeah, and if I don't get the stuff back, I'm in for a stretch. Where is it? I'll get it. Uh, it's down at the precinct station. Gee. You think I can swipe something right out of the police station? What's the matter, you yellow? No. But how am I going to get it? It's a sense, kid. I'll talk to Smith, and we'll all go down to the station as witnesses. And if the stuff's still there, it'll be a flat package wrapped in brown paper. And what I want you to do is... I agree that it seems unjust, Molly. But if Schmidt wants to be technical, he can press a charge of false entry. What does that mean? Reform school, I'm afraid. And you told me the captain just wanted to lecture him. If I'd have known it was going to be like this, I'd have sent him away, hidden him or something. You explain it to her, Captain. I couldn't help it. I don't care. It isn't right to ruin the boy's life just because an old fool had a grudge against his brother. I'm just a precinct captain who takes and gives orders. Why don't you talk to Mr. Schmidt? Don't worry. I will. And plenty. Hello. Uh, Mr. Schmidt, Captain. Some boys and a Mr. Harris with it. Send them in. I'll wait. Uh, send Danny in, too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, it fits better than that old suit. What are you doing here, Harris? Well, Captain, I guess I just remembered something my old pal Pat here forgot. I used to be a kid in that block myself. All Schmidt needed here was a little civil reasoning and... Oh, gee, Molly, it's swell of you to come down here. As I was saying, Captain. Never mind, Harris. Let Schmidt speak for himself. Now, just what is the charge you've got against this boy? Him? Yes. Oh, no, you do not understand. He comes by my place and chase away the customers. And last time, a window was broken. And I think it is him, but I was wrong. This time, he jumps into my car, and I chase him. And I smack him good. That's enough charge for him. Then you mean there is no charge? No. The charge is for him. He pushes me in the face. He chokes me. He is not fit. You should make him to go from the police department. The mouse is in the mill. Yeah. And now he comes by my place in uniform. Yes, and he'll continue to do so. Any action that has been brought against Officer O'Day is because he has exceeded his duties. Not because of the demands of a private citizen. Officer O'Day, the next time you see him hitting a boy, remember a charge called assault and battery. Yes, sir. And the next time, be sure you don't change your mind. There's also a charge called false arrest. Yes, sir. Well, I guess that adjourns my little court for today. Danny? 
You may not always get off so easy. Don't worry, Cap. I won't give you any more trouble. I'll see that he doesn't. Oh, Pat. Come here. Pat, I want you to run this counterfeit $5 plate up the Treasury Department. It's the first tangible bit of evidence that we've gotten. So be careful. Don't worry. I'm hoping this means more to me and Danny than it does to the Treasury Department. Okay, Dutch. You go and do whatever you want to do. But I promised Molly I'd get down and give the club the once over because Pat's trying to spring knuckles. Pat spring knuckles. He couldn't even spring you. If anybody can spring knuckles, it's my way. He's smart. And he's gonna let us in his angles. He told me so. Right, Philly? Right. Well, well, maybe we can get them both to help them. But Pat's still a copper. They don't get guys out of jail. They stick them in. Listen, Knuckles was Pat's pal. And I'm going down to talk to him anyway. Go on, guys. Station W2BRC, Crown Grassy Junior Police Club. W-2-A-C-X. Calling W-2-A-C-X. Dassey Junior Police Station. Hello, Eric. You're coming in fine. Must be that new aerial. Yeah. And listen, Pat. I just heard Danny and Dutch talking about you in the club. They're coming over to see you now. Can you remember exactly what they said, Eric? Sure. Here it is. I wrote it down. Ready? This is what they said. Okay, Dutch. Go on and do what you want to. But I promise Molly. Will you? Sure. We can't keep on living on this chicken feed. And those bills are getting so hot now, they're tracing them the minute they hit a bank. That's just what I want them to do. If they hit enough banks at the same time, it'll take the heat off of us till we can make one big haul and get out of this town. Yeah? How are you going to float so many? That's what I called you for. Now get this straight. The copper, I know, has a club for kids sponsored by a bunch of big businessmen. I've got the kids eating out of my hand, but I can't go near the place because the copper thinks he's wise to me. But I've got an idea. What I want you to do... Hey, Pat, we wanted to talk to you about something. Yeah, I know. Dutch wants to work on one of Milaway's angles. He thinks clubs are for softies. Hey, wait a minute. I never said that. No? Then who said this? Pat Spring Knuckles? Well, he couldn't even spring you. If anybody can spring Knuckles a smile away, he's already going to let us in on one of his angles. He told me. Pat's still a copper. They don't get guys out. They put them in. Hey, how'd you hear that? Oh, just a little gadget we have that wouldn't interest big tough guys like you are. Well, it would me. Hey, how'd you do it? Will you show me? That's one of the things I've been trying to do. But Dutch is right. I'm only a copper. I can't spring criminals. I just want to prove Knuckles innocent. Yeah, even his lawyer couldn't do that. That's because his lawyer doesn't know what we know. Knuckles wouldn't tell him. Yeah? What? Knuckles never carried a gun in his life. Hey, that's right. He said Rod carries with suckers. What? Then he couldn't have killed that copper. Right. And it's up to us to find out who did. Officer Patrick O'Day here. Algy. Thank you. Mike. <laughs> Gee, I never did like cops. My, my old man tried out for him and he was too short. Boy, will he be short when he sees this. Look, Dutch. They got our names on the back of them. Yeah. And he misspelled mine right for once. Thanks, Pat. I'm proud to be a policeman. Me too. Yeah, this ain't so bad. A classy-looking gentleman to see Officer Pat O'Day. Well, show the classy-looking gentleman in, Pete. 
<laughs> now remember, kids, keep your eye on any stranger you see in the neighborhood. And wherever you go, watch out for those bills I described. I'll beat it. Officer O'Day? Yes, sir. I'm Robert Morris. I've worked with boys for years. And I've just heard of the wonderful things you're doing. I'd like to help. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, we're off to a pretty good start here, but any assistance certainly would be welcome. Well, I believe boys should be given some practical work. Where they can earn their own money and occupy their time constructively. Idleness makes the criminal. Well, I agree with you, but the way business has been lately, there hasn't been much work of any kind. That's why I've come. Here, take a look at this. Well, that's fine. Direct advertising has always been my means of contributing to enterprising young men. Tomorrow morning, I want those circulars delivered into the homes of 10,000 families in different sections of the city. And you want boys to do it? Honest boys, who won't throw them away. I'll pay them well. Let's say, uh, one dollar for every 300. Hey, hey, mister! I'll deliver them all for that kind of coin. Give me some, too. Give me some. I'm awful fast deliverer. There'll be plenty for everybody, and I don't want to hear of any of them being shoved down a sewer. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. That money will come in handy. And there'll be plenty to go out every week. Hey, be sure to give them to us. We're junior police. You can trust us. Me too. Vassy Junior Police Club. Yes, Captain. Right away. I'm just leaving. I got a rush call to the station. That's perfectly all right. You run right along. I suppose I can discuss the business with the boys? Yes, sir. Just tell Danny when and where you want the letters picked up and he'll be on the job. Now remember, rookies, keep your eyes open. With your eyes, Captain. Right You'll have to get started by 6 a.m. So you better pick up the circulars by 5.30. I'll write the address for you. That plate was for an almost perfect $5 bill. I looked at it just half an hour before you left. That may be. I didn't see it. But the package I took to the federal building never left my hands until it was delivered. Then how is it a $5 plate when it left here and a blank plate when they opened the package? Maybe the depression got it. Losing valuable evidence is serious for a man who's just been demoted. Look, Captain, I'm proud to be a member of the force, in uniform or out. But if that plate was substituted, it was done either before I got it or after it was delivered. I didn't do it. That's all. You may go now. Yes, sir. Do you think he was burned up enough over his demotion to let his old mob get next to him? I didn't think so before now. There's something crazy going on. I thought I knew why he was so interested in that plate. That's all I'm gonna get. Yeah, I can use more tools. That's all you can handle. Get going. And remember, none of these in the sewer. Oh. Come on, I got a Same story. It's funny, Joe. There's none of that stuff been passed in the 68th precinct. 
You better get up there and keep your eye out on all those apartment house mailboxes. Yes. They're all out turning the whole town upside down for them phony fives the kids spread. Didn't I tell you the heat would be off us? Magnificent, Harris. Now we can start voting the 20s. They wouldn't be looking for them. We'd better hurry up, though, or they will be. We're lambing out tonight with a real bankroll, so get going. We'll meet at Cornwall's at 4 o'clock. What do you want me to do? Bust up that press. Then get upstairs and keep a lookout for them floaters of mine from the west side. Look, Joe, what's wrong? I didn't do nothing. It says I want to find out. A fin? Now, where do you suppose that came from? Yeah, that's what we all want to know. Well, listen, Maybe I you can tell the to... captain. Come along. I didn't have nothing to do with that. Gee, you coppers don't even give a guy a chance to make an honest living. What's the trouble, Skinny? Well, I was working, delivering those letters. I didn't know there was any hot dough in them. Working? Yeah. That's fine. Who are you working for? A fellow by the name of Morrison. He gave the letters to Pat, and Pat gave them to us kids at the club. You can ask him. He's a good kid, Joe. Let him go. Okay, kid. Beat it. Thanks. Well, Captain? You were right, Joe. I had to be shown that a man could sink so low that he'd make criminals out of kids he's pretending to help. But he won't do it while I'm around. Follow Skinny. He may be going to pick up some more of that stuff. And by the way, pick up the trail of any of Pat's kids, you see. Right. Clark, I gotta get back on the beat. Thanks for the swell lunch. I'll have you over at my house for a snack sometime. Snack? You don't sound so easy to please. <clears throat> well, anyway, I promise not to cry my woes on your shoulder like I have today after we're married. Mmm. Is this a proposal? It is not. Cad, beef. <laughs> someday I'll make you eat those words, gal. After all, this mess is cleared up and I'm back on my regular pay. I hope. Oh, Pat, don't worry about it. The captain is bound to learn about his mistake. Well, he doesn't make mistakes like that. Either that plate was substituted before we got there or while we were there. Molly, try and recall exactly what happened in the office. Well, Danny was alongside of me all the time. Dutch and Skinny could have taken the plate and are afraid to return it. But you suspect mile away. If he took it, he's mixed up with a gang of counterfeiters. And Knuckles is covering him, as he always has. But Malloway was in California when Knuckles was arrested. Now, that's what he says. They nabbed me, Pat. What? Well, as soon as the captain let me go, I got as fast as I could. I think they're after you. They're after me? What are you talking about? What do you mean? Well, you didn't tell me there was a phony fit in those letters. So uh, I told him I got them from you. And I'm all over town. What does he mean? Hmm. Huh. He means that I'm in a jam for delivering counterfeit $5 bills all over town. Now I know it was Myloway who stole that play. No one but he could think of a dirty trick like this to play on a bunch of innocent kids. But why would he give the counterfeit away? That's what I've got to find out. Look, Skinny, this is our chance to help Knuckles. You've got to tell me the truth. Why did Myloway come with you to the station? Well, he wasn't a pawn shop. Then he came out and brought Schmidt out for pinching Danny. Then he whispered something to him. He whispered? Yeah. He whispered he could use you kids. That means that Schmidt and Myloway are working together, and Morrison, too. But I don't get it. What's it all about? So you see, I'm the one that's hot now. And it's up to you kids to cover me up for a while. Well, I'll do anything to get that Myloway now. Okay. Go to Eric's and keep broadcasting anything you hear. I'll pick it up some way. Just be careful what you say over the air. Okay. But aren't you going to wait and explain to the captain? And let Myloway lamb out of town, leaving me holding the bag? And trying to explain from a jail cell? I am not. I'm going after him. Pat, please be careful. Now, nah, don't worry. Keep a stiff upper lip. No, don't keep a stiff upper lip. Relax and smile. Yeah, well, That's better. There's the captain now. Stall him. Oh, 
Where's Pat Molly? He isn't here. You shouldn't have done that, Molly. I'm going to radio every car in town to be on the lookout for a disgrace to the force by the name of Pat O'Day. Come along, Molly. Back to the club to deliver some more circulars. I'm working. Yeah, I know. I just saw Dutch, and he said they was all gone. But you can uh, make a couple of bucks doing a job for me. Oh, you don't have to pay me a mile away. I ain't forgot you sprung me. Ah, forget it, Danny. You know the Warwick Apartments on 126th Street? Yeah, it's about six blocks from the subway, Ed. That's right. I want you to run this suitcase up there. Apartment 118. Tell the woman I sent you. Here. Your car fare. And don't let anybody stop you. Check. Where's the kid going? Over to Mays with that stuff. There's a law across the street. What? Don't worry. You might just be standing there. But I ain't taking no chances. Yeah, but the kid. He's got his badge on. Cops won't stop him. Now. I got to get up to Mays. They must have found out about those kids spreading that stuff. Well, why don't they arrest the kid? They want to find out where that suitcase is going. Get a hold of Cornwall and whisper. Tell them to be ready to leave when I get through. Good God! Hey! Hey, Pee Wee! Wanna go with me? Where are you going? 126th Street. Come on, will you? Don't make any more letters to hand out. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll treat you to a subway ride. Come on. Okay. Now, this is Joe. I saw a mile away come out of Smith's pawn shop on Vassy Street, so you better look the place over. I'll call you later. This is the house. Wait here for me, will you, Pee-wee? Okay, I'll be around. I want you to take this into away from him. Well, give it to me and scram. All right, May. Open it up. Pick it up and bring it with you. I've got you this time. No. Oh, not me. You can't pin this on me. I ain't done nothing. Hey, what are you doing? Joe, I ain't done nothing. Not so fast, copper. Pick up that stuff. We've got to get out of here before that shot brings everybody in the house. I said pick that up. I'm getting out of here. I don't want no part of this. You're leaving when I tell you. Come on, come on. Don't try anything funny. Garden Apartments, West 70. Hey, Marlowe, let me go back in your apartment, will you? My badge is in there. See, even when I don't try, I live up to my name. They'll be out looking for the kid. I was a mile away. Yeah, and someday you won't be. You're too quick on that trigger. Yeah? Yeah. You didn't have to bump that copper any more than the one Knuckles was going to the chair for. Got it. 
Knuckles. Pat told me there was counterfeiters mixed up in this. Quit clowning, May. Knuckles is a kid's brother. I was only kidding. Yeah, don't worry, Danny. They won't get you for bumping Joe either. Where we're going, we can use a smart kid like you. Get up. Where's Mile away? Come on, you better start talking. Nine. You are police. In this country, do not shoot first. Right. But Mile away got me and my boys into this. I'm just as hot as you are, so you'd better talk. All right. Don't shoot. I talk. This way, Sergeant. Double crossed us. The cops are at the path. At the path? Yeah. Four. Well, they think that path had it spread all that dough all over town. There was a phony fit in those letters. Yeah, I found that out. Have you heard from Danny and Peavy? No, but Pat told me to come over here and broadcast anything we got. He's going to try to pick up on Eric's radio. See if we get the club. Maybe Danny and Peavy came back more circulars. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you a special bulletin. Officer Patrick O'Day is believed responsible for the wave of counterfeit bills that flooded the city this morning. Anyone knowing his whereabouts, please communicate with headquarters at once. Do not accept $5 notes with the... W2ACX, calling W2ACX. There's no answer. Hey, Dutch, we gotta do something. Mile away's got Danny, he's holding a gun on him. He's really in a jam. That's in a jam. And so are we, all of us. Mallory double crossed us. And you and me are the prize saps. Huh? But I'll get even with that Mallory yet. Where's Danny? Up on West 70th, the Garden Apartments. Turn that thing on and start selling. Uncle Miles. Uncle Miles. Away over at the Garden Apartments on West 70th Street. Has taken Danny with him. Danny doesn't like it there. He says he'll die if someone doesn't come to see him soon. His address, his friend, Pat is listening in, is the Garden Apartments on West 70th. The Garden Apartments on West 70th. The Garden Apartments on West 70th Street. A mouse must be in the milk. Garden Apartments, West 70th Street. A mouse must be in the milk. Dad, I'm taking your car. A mouse is in the milk. How's it not? West 70th. Dead ahead there. Pat, 
A gang just left with Danny. Uh, take my car. I'll drive. Get in the back and stay down. Okay. Good pickup. Hey, I'm not going out of town with you. One phony move out of you and this thing will talk. We're gaining on them, Pat. We're gaining on them. Step on it. There's a copper tailing us. Come on. Step on it. Open it up. of young Danny Dolan to all departments. Ask them to spread a dragnet over the city. Tell them to be ready to shoot it out with him. This boy is armed and desperate. Yes, Captain. That's all.
Well, you cut it out, you give me the creeps. Well, I'm nervous. We're all nervous. Well, Danny, you were right. Miloway made a full confession. His bullets were the same as found in the treasury man that Knuckles was set up for shooting. Gee, Pat, that's terrific! What about Dutch? Took you taught me. <laughs> hey, is that the one? Yeah, <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> hey, you can't hit a guy when he ain't looking. It ain't honest. You're talking. Yeah, I'm talking. As long as Pat and the sponsors made me uh, uh, physical in, well, anyhow, boss of this club, honesty's going to be the first rule. Hey, did, did that just go for the club? Yeah, that goes for us, too. You and me. From here on in. Oh, gee, that would just swell. No, no, now, no. Now, don't be so unreasonable. Hey, uh, uh, get a load of the lovebirds. Hey, Algie. Yeah? Come in a minute. I got an idea. Well, you surely waited long enough to propose. How do I know you really care? Listen, if you want me to, I'll tell the world. I'll tell the whole world. 